you do not mix law and grace. Now, you've heard this before, right? Some will say that we need a balance of law and grace. You know, the idea is that, you know, sure, we have this grace from, from God. Our sins are forgiven and we have grace, but we need to balance it out with uh, rules and regulations, a balance of law and grace, which as I listened to that, I said, well, wait a minute. Doesn't the Bible say you're free from the law, no longer under the law? Uh, anyone who's under the law is under a curse. Christ is the end of the law for all whom believe. And then we get this, and I quote, non-biblical term. It says we need to mix. We need a balance of law and grace. We need to mix the two together. You know, a little bit of Moses and a little bit of uh, Jesus. And then we've got the perfect Christian life. And well, it's just not the case. But what does the Bible say? You know, there is no term about a balance or a mix of law and grace. But we do see some, um, some uh, biblical verses that might talk about this type of a theology. First one comes out of Galatians. It's Galatians chapter 5, verse 9. It sort of tells us what might happen if we were to mix the two. It says, a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. In other words, if you even just give a little pinch of law to grace, you kill the whole thing. I mean, you completely just destroy it. You don't put a little bit of yeast when you're making bread unless you want to work the entire batch, right? Matthew um, 9, and I believe it's verse 16, tells us this. It says, but no one puts a, uh, puts a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. So it's this idea there's this new patch, right? It's unshrunk, and you would not take this new patch and put it on an old garment. Well, why? It says for the patch pulls away the garment, and what happens? And the and the tear gets worse. So putting a new patch on an old garment actually makes the problem worse. Putting the law, the old covenant, onto the new covenant actually makes it worse. It doesn't work. They're not meant to go together. You died to the law so that you could grab on to a new covenant founded on better promises and better hopes. Um, Matthew 9, 17 tells us this. It says, Nor do people put new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wineskins would burst and the wine pours out uh, of the wineskins and are ruined, but they put on new wine into the fresh wineskins and both are preserved. So again, the, the idea again is you're not going to take new wine and you're not going to dump it into an old wineskin because the new and the old will not mix well together and it will burst. They are not meant to complement each other. It's one or the other. So I want to give you, I'm going to read a couple verses for you out of Romans chapter 7. Uh, verses 1 through 4. It's just four verses. And, and what's going on here is Paul is giving us an idea that, you know, there are people that are holding on to Moses, the Mosaic law, and they're sort of running to Jesus back and forth. And Paul kind of paints this picture using human law to help us understand that that is, it's a, in a sense, it's spiritual adultery. You don't, you know, hey, I'm over here, I'm married to Jesus, I'm joined to Jesus, but then I'm going to run over here and I'm going to flirt with the law. It's spiritual adultery. So the verse goes like this, starting in uh, verse 1, chapter 7, Romans, verse 1. It says, Or do you not know, brethren, for I'm speaking to those who know the law. Now again, this is Roman law. This is not God's law. He's just trying to uh, use some symbolism here. He says, I'm speaking to those who know the law, that the law has jurisdiction over a person as long as he lives. Do you not know that? For the married woman, now he's given a picture of marriage so they might understand this. For the married woman is bound by the law to her husband while he is living. But if her husband dies, get this, if her husband dies, she is then released from the law. We would all get this, it makes sense. She is now released from the law concerning her husband. So then, if while her husband is living she and she is joined to another man... Oh, you know where I'm going with this. What does that make her? Right. She shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she now get if her what if her husband dies, what happens? She's not an adulterer, right? She is free from the law, so that she is not an adulteress, though she is joined to another man. 
What's the point? Here it comes. And then we get the therefore in verse 4. Remember, when you see therefore, it means that from now, now based on what I just said, here's my point. Therefore, my brethren, you also were made to die to the law through the body of Christ. Well, why die to the law? Why is it important? Well, the rest of the verse tells us, so that you might be joined to another, to him who was raised from the dead in order that we might bear fruit for God. You see, you can't, you can't be joined to Jesus Christ unless you've died to the law. You, you, it's one or the other. You died to the law. You grabbed on to a new. You're now married to Jesus Christ. And what happens then? Then and only then. In other words, what did that also tell us? You need to die to the law if you're to bear fruit for God. You cannot bear fruit for God unless you die to the law. Hope that helped. God bless you.